HVivo has begun the development of a human metonumovirus challenge model, having secured a contract with an unnamed customer based in North America. I'm delighted to be joined by HVivo's chief executive, Mo Khan. So, Mo, you're developing the industry's first commercial HMPV human challenge model, but there's no financial included in this latest investor update. So how strategic is this challenge study? And can you tell us what the value of the contract is? Yeah, so we're very uh, pleased to be uh, on this uh, call with you. Uh, so unfortunately, we cannot. So um, as you can imagine, um, our clients have a, a high degree of uh, confidentiality uh, clauses when they contact with us, because of course, they don't want to share everything with all the uh, competitors and with HMPV, um, there are actually not that too many um, companies developing a vaccine or antiviral uh, against this virus. So it's not too difficult, to be honest, to identify which one of the few clients that we are potentially working with. And for that reason, uh, after kind of conversation with our client, uh, it was agreed that uh, we needed to kind of make sure that the financial elements uh, of this contract remain confidential. Uh, suffice to say, it's still a, a full end-to-end -end full service contract. And we signed three of these last year. So people should be able to calculate or determine the, the, the kind of approximate value of these type of contracts if they look through the history of our RNSs and you know make the two and two equal four. So it's not going to be that hard, but uh, we, we will not be able to share uh, the actual value of this contract as per the instruction from our customer. I do need to push you a little bit though, Mo. So in terms of value, will it potentially deliver a fresh revenue stream? And if so, which financial year will this feed into? Yeah, so it, it will definitely uh, stream a new revenue uh, uh, so it recognized a new uh, revenue stream for us in the sense that we never had a HMPV challenge model before. The current contract does commit the client to the three process, uh, three part process that involves the, the manufacture, the characterization and the, the full challenge trial for HMPV. The manufacturing part uh, has already started and we should be able to complete most of that this year. The characterization study, and the human challenge study, uh, which are the, the kind of the major bulk of the the contract value, will, will begin in 2024. Okay, so you haven't been paid up front then? We always get paid up front, right? So the as part of our contract, we do have an up, up front uh, clause, so we do get paid uh, that already. Uh, but the, the revenue generation, in other words, when do we recognize the revenue, when we actually do the work, and uh, some of it will be done this year, but the majority of it will uh, be recognized in 2024. So, so cash and revenue are two different aspects to this. Okay, understood. Um, so what is HMPV? It was a bit of a tongue twister for me at the beginning when I was talking about human metanumovirus. What is it? You've done, a, you've done a good job there pronouncing it. So uh, yeah, take credit for that. So it's a, it's a virus that was discovered uh, only in 2001 by Dutch scientists. It's a virus that has been around for a while um, and is related to RSV, which is the respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, and as you know, we've recently got the, our first vaccine through for that virus uh, with Pfizer and GSK. In fact, we ran the challenge trial for Pfizer uh, on that virus. But HMPV um, is a, a virus is fairly common. Most adults catch it, uh, although they don't really show uh, any symptoms. Those that do show typical cold-like symptoms, so runny nose, uh, headaches, fever, and so forth. But it becomes really kind of problematic for young infants, uh, the elderly, and people who have asthma. In those cases, it can cause severe symptoms, in some cases uh, resulting in hospitalization and ultimately causing pneumonia. So one of the doctors recently actually um, termed it as the most important virus that people have not heard of. And I think that's a, a pretty good classification. Like, as you mentioned, you've not really heard of HMPV before, but it's been around. And uh, even as recent as uh, this spring, there was a, a spike in the US. So 
people are expecting to see an inc uh, increase in the incidence of uh, HMPV infections. And, you know, we're here trying to work with our customers to make sure that you know, we are prepared and we have therapy ready for any, any potential increases in the future. Okay, the fact that so few people have heard of it probably goes a long way to answering my next question, which is, you know, why why are there no approved vaccines or antiviral treatments for HMPV? Yes, it's very difficult to make antivirals and vaccines. I think people and, you know, us as well have been fairly spoiled in the rate of progress we saw with regards to COVID. But generally speaking, even RSV has taken about 60 years to get the first vaccine approved. So it's, it's, a, it's a very challenging endeavor to actually come up with a, with a new vaccine or antiviral. But you're absolutely right. There is no uh, dedicated therapy for HMPV. And this is the reason why our client is really kind of um, have a mission to make sure something is available that would benefit patients who are impacted by this nasty virus. Okay, so in terms of that mission um i'm gathering that there's an immediate start to this work so what's what's the timelines when do you expect it to end yeah so absolutely as i mentioned earlier we, we're starting the manufacturing already so that that basically starts from setting a, a clinical isolate from a, an individual who has been infected with hmpv and purifying that and growing that up to what's called a, a good manufacturing practice uh, standard which basically means that is ready for human clinical use um, we expect to start the characterization uh, in the first half of uh, next year, and then uh, the challenge trial will follow that. So the reason why we do the characterization study is to make sure that we find the right dose of the virus that we can use ultimately in the, the challenge trial. To a higher dose of the virus, you cause a high viral load, which makes it really unworkable with regards to uh, the vaccine uh, making any difference. And two lower dose, means that you don't even have a sufficient population of infected people to be able to test whether your vi uh, vaccine works or not. So, so hopefully, you know, coming towards the 2024, we'll have the majority of work done then. I'm just thinking about capacity in terms of HVivo. What else you could take on? Is there an ex expectation that this could lead to similar contracts with the same clients or industry peers? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that is always the, the, the goal, uh, right? So, uh, you know, we'll be very pleased to be working with this client to build up this model. But yeah, in the future, we will uh, look to partner with other companies. In fact, we are talking to another company already uh, looking to partner with us on, on a HMPV challenge trial in the future. So uh, our goal has been always to continue to diversify the challenge models we have and then also, you know, try and attract different markets that we're not really been addressing before. And as we add new challenge models to our portfolio of uh, viruses we have, we've, of course, increased the, the size of the market we are addressing. So this isn't a, a trick question, Mo, but what are the benefits of having a wider number of human challenge models? Oh, yes, it's huge. I mean, one of what we diversify our markets. And one of the other things we're also looking at is that there will be an increase in bivalent vaccines. So this is where you have one vaccine being targeted to more than one uh, virus. So if we have a HMPV model, for example, and an RSV model, there's no reason why we cannot give our clients in, within the same study uh, a potential to do uh, to run a challenge trial against two viruses. And there's a huge step up from where we have been historically. And this is one of the other reasons why we will continue to build on on our models. Not only can you do HMPV standalone challenge trials and RSV standalone challenge trials. But if you have a vaccine or an antiviral that you think could potentially target both viruses, then we can run all, all the two uh, uh, viruses against the placebo within the same protocol. So within a 10 month period, you'll know whether your drug, uh, be it a, a vaccine or an antiviral, uh, works against RSV or HMPV or both. And I think that that to me, it's a hugely uh, beneficial outcome for uh, our clients, but also for, for patients.
And finally, Mo, things are running well in the States. There's a lot of activity there. In April, I saw the FDA granting fast track and breakthrough therapy designations on a flu drug that the HVivo had worked on. Is it greater potential there for the company? So, you know, more than 50% of our work uh, that we are currently doing comes from companies based in the US. So we are already actually, you know, have a good, strong penetration in the United States. And we are the only challenge to our CRO whose data has been reviewed and the company has been given fast track or breakthrough designation from the FDA. I think this is the fourth time uh, this has happened. So we know we actually produce a, a good quality product. Our data has been reviewed by multiple regulatory agencies. Uh, people say that the FDA have, is always difficult and may have a, a kind of maybe a, a negative um, attitude towards challenge trials, but we've seen this through the breakthrough status and the fast track designations we've achieved for our clients through human challenge trials that you know the FDA accepts good quality data, wherever that may come from, as long as the trials have been conducted according to the right regulations, ICA, GCP in this case. So absolutely, we continue to target the US market and we continue to build our European and market, of course, and we have been uh, awarded our first the trial from an Asian client this year as well. So the market is expanding and we are penetrating further into the already established markets. Many thanks, Mo Khan, Chief Executive of HVivo. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for having me on.